Namaste beautiful yogis. I am doing today a video which I will call how exactly I healed from toxic mold exposure. I have my healing story on my channel but I didn't go into details of how exactly I healed and lately I've been seeing so many videos of people saying that they got toxic mold exposure and they're saying how they're gonna go about it and it is a mistake I made initially as well. So I would like to put my story out there for anybody that may benefit from it because it was pretty miraculous uh, how I healed. Now, before we begin, I will actually, I was recently going through my emails and I found the mold test. Basically, we lived in an apartment that was mold infested somewhere in the base of the building, maybe under the building. Something was going on underneath the building. No actual leaks in the apartment we lived in. Uh, I recently was going through my emails and I found the mold test. Once we moved out, I realized I, I better do a mold test on this place because that's when it started dawning on me that my symptoms are mold, from mold exposure. So we did a test. And the numbers were through the roof. I will include them because they're not through the roof. They're beyond, beyond, beyond through the roof. One of the um, uh, m toxic molds was at 3.3 million spores per, un per square, whatever uh, their square um, metric, uh, metric uh, measurement is. I, I just was dancing, so I'm a little out of breath, but I'll calm down. <laughs> uh, but uh basically when you have over 1 million spores that's when this is considered a flooding that was not remedied at all we were 3.3 million i literally was close to dying towards the end of uh, our stay there and which i see over and over again people say it, it takes you a while to move out of a, a sick house because you're not your brain is not functioning well you're already like not in the right space of mind you're not feeling healthy and you're doubting what's happening so it takes like a while for a lot of people to move out even if you have the resources and some people don't even have the resources anyways once um i moved out actually my symptoms got worse i think because that's when you unlock the your body just completely gives up i at the time was not when I got sick, I was having the right diet. As I got sick, I started blaming the diet on my symptoms, so I progressively moved away from my diet. Less um, fruit, less certain things. I, I started adding some animal uh, products. It just, in general, um, I my diet degenerated, but I was not understanding why my symptoms were so bad, so I kind of like kept changing my diet, trying to figure it out. I couldn't understand why I'm dealing with so many symptoms. My symptoms, I'm just gonna quickly cover them. There was, um, one is called derealization, basically brain fog. You're constantly in the state of dreaming, kind of like that's your awareness, like you feel that you're dreaming. You're in a constant state of everything seems a little unreal, like you're just kind of floating through reality from a, like a, like there is a veil between you and whatever the real world generally feels to you when you're not, uh, exposed to mold. It's not like on drugs because uh, drugs or most drugs I'm assuming are, have a little cleaner residue so they have a little more of a uplifting thing to them. This was very dull and very just kind of dull and almost separating you from the divine, from God or whatever. It just had a very very dull on um, say you're high but just on a really really like low frequency so you're low <laughs> and uh, that was one of the main symptoms that i think uh, it affects most people because basically the mold gets into your intestines it starts to wreak havoc on your digestive system and from there it starts to settle in your organs and one of the places is the brain uh, where it se uh, settles so that's part of why there is some um, such uh, such symptom derealization which is brain fog so other symptoms for me, they were pretty bad, my symptoms. I had intense um, joint pain, which was diagnosed as reactive arthritis. So it's different from rheumatoid arthritis, but it acts similar. The symptoms are similar, where all your joints become really inflamed for no reason, they tell you. So I'm thinking, how can it be no, how can I inflamed and my body 
how can my body start attacking my own tissue for no reason that doesn't make any sense so that's one of the things about autoimmune diseases the doctors won't tell you that there is a reason they just don't know what the reason is or sometimes the reason is pesticides it's just drugs contamination contaminated waters air etc so the body's toxic load is through the roof the body cannot deal with anything anymore there is toxicity settled in say the tissues the joints the fat the liver the thyroid and the body starts to attack its own tissue because the that's where the the toxicity the heavy metals the molds are so we're not attacking there is no um there is no defect in our body to where the body will just rip out and attack its own cells it just usually it starts from something else from some form of toxic overload and say i got extremely sick and my partner less so one of the reasons i think is because i was spending a little more hours in the house and the, as i was spending more hours the more i got sick and i was teaching yoga obviously i couldn't teach yoga with inflamed joints they were like they felt like they might be broken i i thought i have broken a broken knee etc just really inflamed joints um, once I couldn't teach, I would stay even more in the house. I didn't want to meet with friends because I was starting to become really depressed about being in so much pain for no reason. And just, it, ba it basically before we moved in, I was in perfect 100% health. Like I just felt 100%. I've never dealt before that with joint pain. I've never had in inflammation. Um, I've never dealt with fatigue ever in my life. I've never had fatigue in my life. So that was the other symptom, fatigue, just no energy, no clear thinking, joint pain, inflammation, hypothyroidism, because the mold attacks the thyroid. And um, uh, the symptoms can keep going. Oh, uh, just bloated stomach. Like for example, I would wake up and be completely flat stomach, get in the car, start driving somewhere, and it would just like blow up. All of a sudden, a few times I threw up in the house. Maybe there was a bloom at the moment. Uh, I had to go to the emergency for anaphylactic or for um, my eyes reacted to the mold, which again, I didn't know at the time. So I had to go to emergency and then to eye doctor, etc., etc., etc. They couldn't find what it is. But my eyes would not stop watering and I just got pretty scared. Anyways... I'll include my <laughs> toxic <laughs> mold uh, spores uh, count report here somewhere in the video so that you can see the numbers. They were through the roof. I think no person, regardless of our genes and predisposition to um, mold toxicity sickness, I think anybody will get sick in such a place. And there is really nothing you can do for a house like this. The, a house like this should not be remedied. It should be um, basically demolished. Uh, the house has to be torn down. You can't remediate. You can't fix a house that's at that level. So there is basically sick houses. And you sometimes, um, when you open the walls, you release even more spores. So that's when people get even sicker. So you don't want to necessarily open up walls where there is mold and release everything in the air. Also, uh, bleach is not a good alternative because bleach kills the mold, but not the spores. And the spores is what we are reacting to, not the mold itself. The mold itself is contained to the area. It's the spores that are traveling, flying through the air. And that's what we're reacting to. Anyways, um, so how did I heal? I'm not making this video about my healing story because you can watch my healing story, but I'm making it about how exactly I healed and it was a complete healing. Um, I, um, as I got sick, I was at that time on, I was for years basically kind of close to vegan, but never for extended period completely vegan there would be just like a goat yogurt every so often uh, something else like that but even with that the 90% of my diet I would say was vegan and I would go through big intervals five months of a vegan diet so I was already used to a vegan diet then I became completely vegan at 21. Up to this point, I have been very, very vegan, very high vegan. Like even if I tell you I'm, I was eating some animal products, 
just minimal like I was literally eating fruit and at the time I wasn't that big on veggies so mostly fruit then I became completely vegan and raw vegan for a while first kind of high fat nuts then I um, became high fruit vegan and that was before the 80 10 10 and all of that movement so I didn't quite have guidelines or anything or community I just did it because I came down to that conclusion due to my how my body was feeling and also just at the time I was studying everything I was studying every nutritional traditional book Ayurveda everything Chinese medicine I was just studying everything and just developing my own thing so uh, once I got well actually that before I got sick, actually, I stopped eating high fruit. There was like that movement of gourmet, uh, raw vegan. So I was doing the raw high fat, like all these cakes with coconut oil and those uh, desserts. And they just made me feel gross, like disgusting. I don't even know what the point is of eating raw if you don't feel good. So I was eating those like really high fat things and low, the only sugar... Uh, the only fruits I would have it would be like berries and some melons because they're supposedly lower in sugar. And as I got sick, I started questioning everything and started like tweaking my diet far too much, changing things, adding supplements. Just I was, it's I was doing a lot of things uh, in the years uh, in the time we were in the apartment, obviously with no results, no effect. And once we moved out, I was on. Um, high fat diet of eating a lot of fresh raw macadamias from the shell and veggies so i would just eat a lot of macadamias i would just was so into those macadamias even now i would eat them if i knew they're that healthy or if i knew i can stop but they're so good and um veggies and i was eating cheese at this point because i had gone to a nature path and he convinced me that i need all kinds of animal protein and meat etc up until this point i have been vegetarian for i think 15 years and i started early in my teens and he convinced me that i need meat he didn't i don't think he believed that it was mold exposure he looked at my hormones said i'm close to dying i didn't have everything was at zero all my hormones and um and at the time, I was in such complete brain fog, like I couldn't think for myself. Uh, he convinced me that I need to have some meat, and this still hurts me to this day. Uh, I've never admitted it to anybody, but it still hurts me to this day because it was the most, probably the most upsetting part of the whole experience. But I re-included some meat into my diet, like lamb and um i didn't get sick or anything because i've always had strong digestion uh, oh i've always had strong digestive um strong um hydrochloric acid i've always had strong digestion i'm pita in ayurveda so i have strong digestion so it didn't bother me like that in in the sense of digestion but he told me to eat meat about two three times a day and i would just try to eat like to try to bring myself to it i would buy something and it would sit and sit in the fridge and I would cook it like five, six, seven days later. So I think I would only have a little bit every like seven days and it was just really upsetting. But I also wasn't all there <laughs> in here. So um, it, it was, I was just trying to save my life basically. It still aches me to this day that I had to do this because obviously it had negative effect on my health on top of it. But I guess the silver lining is that I realized that I'm not doing veganism and vegetarianism because it's a habit of mine or because I'm already doing it. But it's a strong feeling from the core of my being. It's not something that I've read. It's not something that it's just it's a strong thing that I would choose over and over again in my life if I had not already chosen it. Or if I have to reevaluate my diet every morning when I wake up, I would, every single morning I would choose veganism because, um, because of the ethical factor, because of the fact that I don't feel that I need to put anybody through suffering in order for me to exist. On the contrary, the less I cause suffering, the less suffering for me. But we still are under the laws of Lila and Karma. Karma 
being cause and effect, whatever we've done some time in the past, it's coming back to us. And Lila, the law of unpredictability, unpredictability, ambiguity, um, vague, vagueness, and things just can happen. And that's free will, that's just the nature of reality. Anyways, we are creators, but we also are part of this universe that is very wild and there is harmony and chaos, both. And uh, anyway, so I included some meat, I was eating high, fr uh, high fat, um, some cheese, some, um, some, um, I was trying like old brine here and there, um, vegetables mostly, olives, etc. Uh, still pretty natural. My dad was very natural even with the inclusion of the meat. Um, that was very rare and very few times. I, I couldn't I couldn't deal with it, even through my brain fog. So at some point I realized why don't I go back to what I've always done. I've always eaten fruit since I was 15 years old, that was the the base of my diet, it's always been at the base of my calories, I've always known for it to be the most spiritual, most cleansing, most fit for humans food, so I was scared to do it because everybody will tell you that sugar will feed mold, but fruit comes with anti-fungal, anti-bacterial, anti-viral ingredients with uh, the capacity fruit is the only food that has the capacity to clean your lymph system once you clean your lymphs and your kidneys everything starts to filter and healing begins if you eat meat that accumulates in your digestive system and provides breeding ground for more mold more fungi more bacteria more viral um, viruses etc and Actually, just the other day, I listened to the medi med uh, medical medium on uh, mold. And I don't know, I've never listened to him before on mold. But he brought uh, an amazing point And he said that nowadays mold is such a prevalent problem, prevalent issue, uh, because everything is treated with fungicides. And it creates the same situation that antibiotics create. They create superbugs. Well, fungicides, everything is laced in fungicides. That creates super modes. Another thing is drywall and plaster. Uh, just using uh, different new materials now can uh, create breeding ground for mold. Um, uh, brick buildings don't create such hazard for human health as the new materials. And um, Another thing that the medical medium brought up is that we all have viral load in us. We all have um, Epstein-Barr, herpes, and uh, other viruses. And they're just the herpes family has 60 strains of viruses, not just the genital herpes, but just stuff that can settle in your liver. Um, um, Epstein-Barr is, people know, mono or uh, rheumatic uh, or glandular fever, but um, it, it has so many other strains. It can settle in many parts of your body in your thyroid etc and uh, once it settles uh, there it just it's an opportunistic uh, virus that waits for your immune system to be down for it to be going under stress for it to be exposed to mold for it to be exposed to radiation uh, chemtrails etc it just it's waiting for it to be exposed to uh, external factors so that it can come out and attack your body so it's basically a perfect storm of us. Oh, and another thing is if we have, all of us have far too many heavy metals in our system, the more heavy metals, the more the viruses can proliferate. And because they have become uh, symbiotic or um, they have great partnerships with the heavy metals. So Epstein-Barr and heavy metals go hand in hand. The higher your toxic load is of heavy metals and such, your viral load can become higher and you can have different strains of viruses. And so now I don't have every answer on how things worked in my body and how many viruses I've had. I've had certain viruses, I'm sure, and I've had heavy um, metal um, toxicity in my body. But up to this point, I have not had any allergies ever i just didn't i, I kind of had semi strong constitution with issues that i eliminated once i quit dairy 
um, meaning I had tonsillitis, some um, sinus issues, uh, um, a problem with my um, uh, reproductive system, etc. Those were all healed when I uh, quit dairy. How I healed with mold? I decided I'm gonna just drop everything. At that point, 80 10 10 was becoming very popular. There was 30 bananas a day, etc. So I kind of, at this point, went back to something I've always done, only with support. There was more online support. And I just dropped everything out of my diet and went on straight fruit. Um, I, at that point, I couldn't get out of bed. I would lay in bed and I don't know if I was going through viral problems as well, or like viruses releasing or it was just a mold. But I remember we had to uh, repair the AC and there was handyman coming and there was like four handyman coming inside the house and fixing stuff in the house. I couldn't get out of bed. There were strangers in my house and I kind of felt like this is probably like not a good idea to be laying around all day. I could not, for the life of me, stop sleeping. I was just drowsy and tired and couldn't get out of bed. So I decided I'm just gonna do the fruit. I was pretty scared because every single um, uh, every single diet uh, for uh, healing mold would tell you to avoid sugar. They don't understand that fruit comes with. First of all, it's fruit is condensed sunlight. Sun kills mold. That's one thing. Fruit has such amazing antioxidants in it, in it, like the apples, especially in the peel, the grapes, resveratrol in the peel. That is enough to boost your system and start killing off everything, cleaning the lymph, repairing the kidneys, etc. So what I did is I um, I dropped everything. I dropped even the herbs, the supplements. I was on like super expensive supplements that I was supposed to be taking every hour. I dropped, they were all natural supplements from the nature path, but they weren't doing much for me. So I dropped everything and just um, connected with the farmer uh, from somewhere from Northern California. He was coming here to the Hollywood Farmers Market in Los Angeles. And I started buying two, three boxes of grapes every Sunday from him and eating that. Uh, so, uh, so, and I would eat grains, not because it was that beneficial, but because I was craving something savory. So during the day I would eat one big meal of grapes, big, big, big. And then at night I would eat greens without salt or fat, but I would eat them with um, uh, like certain spices and lemon and such um, um, things. So I was keeping everything very low for the first at least month to six months so that the body can completely, the blood sugar can regulate and the body can start healing. Now the cool things thing is that from not being able to get uh, out of bed, I ate fruit one day and the next day I didn't know what to do with my energy. I cleaned the house, it just, I, I perked up. My symptoms started to clear up on this diet, but they did take a good two years to three years to clear completely. The first month everything like was improved 60%, my energy came back. Um, inflammation in the joints was a little slower to go away, but maybe within four, five, six months, it was down 90%, but it was still flare up here and there. Um, and the reason why I'm saying flare up is so that you're not thinking that anything will be a quick fix. Um, you will have to you have to uh, give it time. Uh, there is no complete healing. There is gradual healing. Um, the brain fog probably took the longest to heal. It might have been one or two years, but it did clear completely. Maybe more, maybe three years. Um, all the other symptoms took a while to clear up. The thyroid, uh, for the thyroid, I will include in the links below everything I use. For the thyroid, I use something called thiodine, I think, and it was extremely effective in healing me. Uh, for the lungs, I uh, did diffuse oils, thieves, rosemary, lemon, etc. I'll include the oils I used in the description below. I'll post, if I forget to mention something now, I'll post it in the description below, so go read there. So in case I'm forgetting certain things that I did. I did a little bit of herbs for cleansing, a little bit of Dr. Morris herbs. Um, 
lymph formula, kidney formula, but very little. I was not just, I was not liking any herbs at the time. I was not liking supplements. Everything was throwing me off. So I kind of just stuck to fruit and greens. Um, now, I must say don't, if you're going to um, switch to fruit, don't go for dates because dates do have some mold on them since they're dried fruit. And that, that although that is a very... Um, uh, benign mold for most people and it won't bother them because there is mold in the soil, mold all around us, all the mold on the fruit is not the same mold, it's benign mold but dates do have certain molds and they can trigger you. Also they're far too dense, far too high in sugar for for when your body is very sensitive. Also bananas, they weren't working for me in the beginning. Uh, what works best is oranges and grapes because they're really high in antioxidants, really high. They're, they're subacid, so they're going to pump the fluid out of uh, your lymph nodes, of the lymph system. Uh, and they will, will clean up your system. They will rehydrate you. They will clean up your intestines, your liver. Uh, liver has to be, the liver has to be really clean in order for you to begin uh, healing. I wasn't perfect, I've said that in my previous video, um, I was drinking coffee um, and maybe that's why it took me longer to heal had I probably gone 100%, uh, but coffee at the time was reducing my inflam inflammation symptoms. When I quit coffee, my joints would ache more and if I drink coffee, uh, my um, inflammation will go away. Also, I was dealing with depression or upset about the whole situation. So coffee was helping me feel good. Uh, it was, I, it just, I, it's one of the things that kind of works for me, although I quit it often. Um, it kind of, if I keep it in moderation, it tends to balance me out. Um, I don't know uh, how long, I don't remember the depression side of it. I feel that I've always, I'm kind of a positive person and I always get inspired about things. So I feel like I pulled out of that pretty quickly. Uh, but there was definitely a very low period where it just felt very desperate, lonely and sad. Um, I did pull out, I started a different business, I had to quit teaching yoga because of the pain I was um, going through. Um, but um, ultimately it put me on a different path and that worked out. It also taught me a bunch of lessons that I guess I'm grateful to have learned. Um, suffering is just part of our reality and I guess most of us will go through a certain amount of suffering through our lifetime and that's that. And also, once we go through one thing, that doesn't mean that's it. There is other things that we will face down the line. I've faced other things through my life. That's not you know, the only thing I've had to go through. But I did heal completely from that. And oh, so now, yeah, I had to start doing interval yoga, which is a combination of interval training plus yoga, which also stimulates the cleansing of the internal organs, stimulates uh, the hormonal system to balance itself out. Um, it helps with lymphatic drainage, healing the knees, small uh, hops uh, such as uh, lung jumps and such were an uh, integral part in healing my knees. Um, in my other joints, yoga of course, so I have so many free classes on my channel, feel free to go to the beginner ones and start there and I do have a beginner program on my website for purchase, uh, it's a 90 day beginner program if you're unsure about um, my beginner classes you can get the program, it's very um, gradual and comprehensive. Uh, and that I don't mean this to be a self plug, but that's what I did to heal, and I actually created that whole system in order to heal. So, in full disclosure, I have to explain that as well because without exercise, I don't think I would have healed as completely. Um, now, um, uh, I did use a lot of uh, dark leafy greens at the time, um, spinach, arugula, baby spinach, baby arugula, baby kale, all of those, and melons. So the best fruit would be, any fruit would be the best fruit. Make sure to not combine very sweet fruit with acidic fruit because that will challenge your digestion. You first want to heal the gut and with eating a lot of fruit that will hydrate your system 
I have two more things I need to uh, mention, so stay tuned, but the fruit will heal your digestion. Um, people that say they can't digest fruit is usually because there is a lot of crap in the system and it just starts to scrub it off. Uh, and starts to uh, release things in the body, starts to cause detox. So you have to get slowly through the initial discomfort and later after that fruit will become the easiest to digest food on earth. Um, also, on empty, drink a lot, a lot of water, lemon water. Uh, the Dr. Moore serves if you're feeling extremely sick for lymphatic drainage and kidney uh formula i'll list herbs that i can think of i used a magnetic pulser which is a magnetic pulser that you put on joints and it pulsates also on lymph nodes and it pulses through them and it stimulates them to heal um i used to go to a lot of hot springs that helps a lot infrared saunas can help but one thing that if you have terrible 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 digestion and you just can't digest anything celery juice medical medium recommends it but i have been doing it also not knowing about his recommendation at all and coincidentally i love celery juice so i have been doing a lot of celery juice uh, with lemon or lime and a little bit of water it's delicious and it's your sodium for the day your minerals for the day um, I did that is not a vegan thing but also in my opinion it's uh, it's a great food for a healing body honey now if you're gonna get honey get from a small farmer um, that treats their bees properly, that doesn't feed them with sugar, etc. So really, really good, high quality honey that um, uh, provides glucose for your liver that is very easy to absorb, very easy energy for your body without any digestive issues on empty honey and or diluted in water honey and honey also will heal your gut it has antibacterial antifungal properties it did help me i don't use honey anymore uh, i've stopped years ago but at the time i feel that it did help also because it doesn't have any fiber you can have it without any issues now as far as fat anybody will say what about fat what about fat fat when you're healthy but in the healing phase Drop the fat out because fat, too much fat will elevate your blood sugar levels. And um, combining fat with sugar is also not a good idea. While you're healing, any fat will slow your detox down. So is green juices and green lettuces. They will slow the digestion, the detox down a little bit, which may not be a bad thing. The lettuce also, the greens, they will provide you with, they almost have an um, sanitizing effect on your system they will really really regulate your uh, digestive flora and i was not taking any probiotics and my digestive flora got regulated perfectly uh, i think the greens provided that medium also fruit provides that you know the white film on top of grapes that's probiotics uh, especially if they're organic and um, obviously I still wash them but you know some of the film remains there and also when you have so much fiber and water rich foods in your diet that cleans up your system and you naturally regulate your system fat you can add fat later once the healing and detox uh, has kind of done a big bulk of its work and um, just don't overdo the fat because when you overdo the fat then you're blood sugar will spike and the detox will slow down L learn a little more about that there is quite a few resources i like the mindful Di diabetic channel the mindful diabetic it's his uh, has type 1 diabetes and he has uh, been able to uh, manage it really well on a high fruit diet with low fats now i don't do as low fat as him i do much higher fat because um, since I healed I just uh, included avocados, olives, almond milk, cashew milk, coconut milk um, and such all whole food fats no extracted fats but I've included um, whatever I'm craving but for the healing phase I kind of had to be a little strict I had to avoid a lot of things I wasn't cooking anything uh, now in the winter time I did start to cook I would steam artichokes asparagus 
uh, I would steam eggplant but for a while I just did raw and I healed now I also have to add that I have always eaten pretty well and pretty high fruit high veggies so it wasn't bothering me at the time if you have to transition slowly from a like say a keto diet or a paleo diet where you're not used to that much, that much fiber it may take a little bit to transition that's why honey may be helpful because there's no fiber in it and it's quick glucose for your uh, for quick energy and it can heal your liver um so that was helpful for me yeah um diffusing oils and breathing straight from the diffuser oils that was helpful because it can really kill whatever is off left off in the lungs um if i'm forgetting something i will add it in but for me the biggest 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 healer was the fruit with some uh, soft grains that had such an immediate and profound effect on me that i kept going i went through from being in bed with insane pain and just wanting to die into energy, 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 feeling good. I would still have flare-ups uh, at first more often and then less and less and less and less and less uh, uh, from joint pain and mental fog, etc. But everything was just on a fast scale of decreasing. Anyways, uh, I think that's it. I I may do another video if I remember about some other aspects of it, but that's that's basically it. I wanted to make this video because a lot of people are realizing they have mold exposure and instead of doing the most healing that they can do, they go on those like low sugar diets because sugar supposedly feeds mold, but fruits don't feed mold. Fruits kill mold. Fruits heal the gut fruits heal the digestive issues the digestive system the, they detox the move the lymphatic fluid they balance the kidneys balance the hormones um the sweetest fruits as i said avoid them in the beginning so that your blood sugar can regulate oranges grapes are perfect melons are perfect berries are perfect if you can get organic berries then just focus on fruits that have a peel like orange and stuff so that you're not getting extra pesticides because berries are really high in pesticides and you can't wash them off because they're so soft um exceptions are okay just not animal uh, um, products uh, i uh, that would throw your hormones off balance again but certain cooked foods or just doing certain things as an exception those are okay because you will heal overall if you follow the main protocol and uh, the last thing i need to add is a lot of water did i say it in on empty stomach at least two three liters a day and uh, you will heal just have a positive attitude see the sun every day uh, move you have to move dance uh, do interval yoga uh, intervals and yoga uh, don't exert exhaust yourself but move and um, trampoline rebounding can help and um, with essential oils that is a solid plan you may need to add more herbs than i did you may need to add certain supplements uh, i would um the supplements i would add would be zinc for uh, boosting the immune system uh vitamin c or a lot of lemon juice um maybe lysine because it uh, fights uh, the epstein bar the herpes type of uh, viruses aloe vera could be included uh, spirulina can be included so that's that's about it it was pretty uh, the my diet was very simple but it was through the roof amazing and effective and it was so effective that it kept me i knew i'm on the right track but sometimes if you are coming from a very toxic background of eating very high animal uh, uh based animal um products then maybe you're detox symptoms would be terrible and you may feel a little worse before you feel a little better so everybody is different that's the thing everybody is different and maybe some people do need to um, have some animal products or i don't know uh, i personally feel that the sooner you remove them the faster you will heal uh, because they will especially eggs and milk they're so hormone laced with the natural hormones of the animal that they will affect your hormones and 
the cholesterol, the saturated fats, all of those are just very difficult for the body to deal with. Um, milk in general is very mucus forming and that's the last thing you want in your system. Uh, meat is just not very good for your digestive system. We're not equipped to digest it properly and eliminate it properly. So that's another um, problem we did besides the hormones and um, the ethical aspect of it. But that's from me. I just wanted to make this video because that's my healing story and it may help someone. If it helps one person, I'd be super happy. All right, ask me or message me if you have uh, any questions. And thanks for watching. Namaste.